in the coming minutes, I will do a short uh, introduction of okay, what's Open Food Fact, what's been going uh, on since last year, and what's our perspectives. So first, uh, for some of you may not know it yet, who are we? So first, we are a community of people who are convinced that the impact of food is too important uh, for its associated data, a product, a food product data, to be left in the dark. That's why in 2012, uh, Stefan created an open and free database of food products for citizens, uh, users, uh, researchers, and all our users. Uh, open Food Facts is also a website and a mobile app uh, for uh, users and citizens to know what's the impact of the food they eat on their health and on the planet. We made uh, great progresses on uh, many projects uh, at Open Food Facts, uh, thanks uh, to the community and thanks to the permanent team. And I wanted to, uh, to highlight a few uh, key metrics uh, we reached this year. Uh, a bit uh, after the last Open Food Facts days, we reached uh, 3 uh, million products, which is a, a major milestone. And we also reached some uh, uh, country-specific milestones, such as uh, 10,000 uh, products in India. This increase in product count uh, went along with an increase in uh, the number of um, unique monthly visitors uh, on the website and on the mobile app. So we went from 2.5 million uh, users last year in August to uh, 3.2. And uh, from the 2018, more than 28 million uh, edits, which are like uh, atomic uh, informations uh, uh, users and third-party apps add to the Open Food Facts database. I wanted to come back to uh, something you may have noticed, which is <laughs> this screen. <laughs> uh, we, we've had like quite uh, a lot of uh, server issues lately. Uh, these uh, issues uh, come from the fact we have more users, as, you, as I just showed you on the previous slide, we have uh, a lot of bots, especially AI bots, that crawl our website. Uh, and uh, more and more third-party apps use our uh, data, our website, and our API uh, in order to, to get some like uh, relevant information about food. So uh, we are trying to make things better uh, by uh, buying and installing a new service. So as you can see here, it's Alex uh, doing some geeky stuff with the server and in our data center. <laughs> uh, we, also, we also took some, um, some measures in order to improve things on the software side. So for instance, we added some rate limits to prevent abuse, uh, especially on our APIs. Uh, thanks to John here, uh, who is uh, present here today, uh, we introduced a new service uh, called Open Food Facts Query that uh, speed up the loading uh, time of uh, facet pages. And we also improved uh, the overall software performance and uh, improved also the caching of, uh, of requests. I wanted also to highlight a few uh, key uh, projects and key uh, community contributions that happened this year. And one of the great success of 2024 is Open Prices. Uh, it's a project led by the Open Food Tax community and especially by Rafael uh, Odini. Um, it went uh, from ideation to production in just a couple of months, which is uh, quite incredible uh, knowing uh, what project it is. And if you want to know more about open prices, uh, Rafael Odini uh, will delve into this uh, topic in, uh, in his lightning talk. Uh, we um, also worked on a new moderation tool called uh, Nutri Patrol, uh, which, is, uh, which will be really useful for like, moderators to uh, be more efficient in uh, spotting uh, images uh, uh, that are not appropriate uh, to spot like vandalisms on open uh, product facts, uh, uh, open food facts uh, products. A uh, new version of the Nutri Score was also released uh, this year, uh, which helps uh, which uh, take advantage of the latest uh, advance in science uh, to better know the impact of food on, uh, on your health. And uh, one of the projects I wanted to highlight as well is the ingredient spell check. Uh, so Jeremy joined us uh, uh, about six, seven months ago. And he worked on an on a AI model 
that will be used uh, to uh, automatically uh, correct the spelling uh, mistakes uh, that w the, that are present in ingredient lists, uh, so that the ingredient lists are better recognized. And he will also uh, present it uh, during his lightning talk today, uh, tomorrow maybe. <laughs> Uh, a, a, a little focus on data quality. Uh, so thanks to uh, the data quality team uh, who did like an amazing job at spotting every possible mistake in product pages and correcting them. Uh, we went from a bit above 5% in, uh, uh, in data quality error. So it's a percentage of products with at least one data quality error. Uh, to uh, a bit above uh, four uh, percent, so four dot two. So it's quite uh, an amazing work because it takes a lot of time and effort to correct every single uh, product page, and uh, we thank the data quality team for it. And as perspectives, uh, we are currently working on two uh, a major projects, which is uh, open product facts. So you may have noticed it, but we have like a brand a new open product fact and open uh, beauty facts website, uh, thanks to Stefan. And uh, the, the, the graphical interface, the design is uh, now the same as uh, on the Open Food Facts website. And we plan like uh, many new features on uh, these uh, siblings projects. Uh, and you can see the posters in the poster room if you want to know more about this, uh, this subject. And a project I've been working on, uh, I actually haven't introduced myself for, for those who don't know me. I'm uh, Raphael and I work in machine learning at Open Food Facts for about two years now. And one of the projects I've been working on for four months now is uh, called NutriSite. It, uh, it's um, an AI model that uh, automatic automatically extracts uh, nutri nutrition information from images. And I hope it will be like a game changer for contributors because it will allow them to uh, uh, help them uh, be much more, much faster when uh, it comes to uh, indicating every possible nutrient uh, value in one product. And uh, I uh, welcome uh, Manon, uh, who will talk to us uh, about the producers. Hello, everyone. My name is Manon. And I am um, a partnership uh, officer. So I work with food manufacturers and also other type of partners. Um, so I present open food facts on video calls and stuff like that. Uh, um, so why are we interested to uh, talk with food manufacturers? Uh, the first reason is because today um, in the database they represent about 20% of the products that are uh, consulted by uh, the consumers. So when we can have the data, it means that uh, people who consult products can have reliable data. Uh, when they accept to send us data, they generally send us the data about their whole portfolio. And when we talk with uh, Carrefour or Intermarché or big retailers, uh, it represents a very uh, significant amount of data. Uh, and another reason why we're very interested to talk to producers is because we have uh, a fantastic tool, which is the producer's platform. And in the producer's platform, we have uh, little tools that are here to nudge food manufacturers to improve their products. So we tell them how to improve their Nutri-Score, how to make their product less fat than their competition, for example, or we help them uh, reformulate the nutritional uh, formula of their product. So we work with food manufacturers and uh, we one of the update of uh, 2024 is that we built uh, a strong team, uh, the partnership team, which is dedicated to uh, reaching out to these food manufacturers. So it's a, really a community driven effort. Uh, we meet uh, once a month and um, we have a lot of tools and resources to go uh, after the food manufacturers data. Um, and we're very happy to see that uh, in 2024 we are now uh, we've onboarded more than 300 uh, food manufacturers. So big up uh, to the team. And uh, yeah, in 2023 we don't have the figure yet for 2024, uh, but we imported more than 60,000 uh, products. So there's a lot of brands, 
uh, almost 3,000. That could be a milestone for 2025. So if you want to join the team, just uh, feel free to talk to us. And so the goal is also to go and reach out to food manufacturers that are outside France. Uh, we're quite well developed uh, in France now, but the goal is to reach other countries like Germany, Spain, Italy, UK. So we're very happy to see that there's a lot of uh, contributors coming from all over the world today. Uh, and we've also worked this year to drive uh, the international communities, the development of uh, uh, new communities locally. So big thanks to our ambassadors, which are surrounded with orange color. So thank you, Marius. Thank you, April. Uh, this is really important to have local figures to then uh, animate and make the project uh, alive in other countries. We also have put this map, but this is uh, not quite accurate. This is the map of all the edits that have been made on the Open Prices project. Uh, I really wish we can have this map for the Open Food Fact project, so we can have a more representative uh, vision of the size of the community. But uh, when did Open Prices start? Six, yeah, January. So this is the impact only since January, so we can see that uh, food is really fascinating for everyone. And uh, we need to keep our efforts to going global. Uh, we've also worked to build connection uh, with different type of organization all over the world. Uh, I couldn't put everyone on the map, but we discuss with a lot of uh, consumer association and try to bring them um, information about food uh, so that they can do some... Uh, uh, campaigns and study, for example, um, all the things around the marketing for children. Uh, this is a topic that interests a lot of consumer organization. So thanks to our database, they can uh, do interesting studies. Uh, we discuss a lot with the uh, universities as well, uh, all over the world, uh, networks, and uh, I put the EFSA there as well. So. Um, Wherever you're from, <laughs> if you know uh, your local ecosystem, either about food or open data, uh, we're always keen to learn about new players and, and connect with them. Um, so as a concluding note, uh, I also wanted to talk about uh, how open food fact is used by science and by scientists in order to uh, uh, find a new association between the food we eat and human health. And there is uh, one uh, French team uh, who like uh, did a fantastic job at using open food facts data in order to uh, to prove some association between uh, food and uh, human health, which is the Urn team. Uh, the, they're running a human cohort in uh, France of, uh, of uh, thousands and thousands of participants, and they proved like numerous uh, uh, links uh, in the past. And one of the two of the latest studies uh, were published this year in 2024, and they uh, uh, focused uh, specifically on some additives which are emulsifiers, and they studied the link between emulsifiers and cancers and emulsifiers and diabetes. And one of uh, the main results is that uh, some emulsifiers that, we, uh, that are co common and very widespread in human alimentation are actually linked with uh, some cancers and some diabetes. And we met uh, a few months ago uh, the Urn team and they told us uh, that uh, this study would not have been possible without the Open Food Facts data. So, as a concluding note, I wanted to tell you uh, it's not only about open data, but it actually helps scientists uh, find real uh, association and real correlation uh, between the food we eat and your health. So, thank you all for your attention. <laughs>